yesterday if you're able to, to head out in the gazebo courtyard um, special thanks to our our teams for making that happen uh, we're excited to share with you this month's construction update obviously Jordan and Carla will be the main presenters updating you um, I believe I've already made an error um, that Jordan will correct in my communication most recent communication to you about the ramp going up to the first floor it actually is going to the ground floor um, so we'll, we'll clarify that out here but uh, but yeah, we'll look forward to Jordan and, and presentation there, and then of course we'll take questions at the end. So, Jordan, take it away. Everybody hear me okay? No. All right, so I'm Jordan Albrecht. I'm the project manager for C.G. Schmidt, um, who's in charge of everything that's going on out here with construction. So uh, we'll jump right into it. All right, so just what we're going to be going over today. So uh, just a, a quick overview of the schedule, where we're at, um, some updates about um, where we're at with construction as to things that we're working on, um, some fun facts that um, are correct, uh, a little quiz, and then some Q and A. So, um, so first, just tentative schedule. Um, so this is uh, pretty much the same as what we've been given uh, every other month. But uh, currently, the the schedule for Bradford Terrace um, is is to be complete with that in October, early October, um, and that's. But a difficult uh, building to deal with. Um, a lot of uh, unknowns, and um, it's, an, it's an older building too. But um, progress is going really well, and we feel like we're well on our way to completing that building. Um, late September, early October. Um, Common South, so that'd be the dining room area that you see right over there, the, the area that we've been working in for the past few months. Um, we're still on track to um, be complete with that before Thanksgiving. So that's always been our plan to be. Um, Done with that prior to Thanksgiving, I think we're going to be done well ahead of that as well. So um, stay tuned um, for that. Uh, you'll start to see, if you look in the windows, you'll start to see a lot more um, maybe exciting uh, things going on in there than there has been recently. So make sure you look look in the windows over the next few weeks and you'll see a lot more uh, changes in there coming up. Um, and then the water tower building. So um, our rough schedule for that is to start in January and that's... Um, all dependent on us getting all this other stuff done. So um, that's, that's the current plan with the schedule for right now. <coughs> so just some quick pictures and kind of updates about what we're working on. So in the commons, um, the picture on the left is a view of the new bistro area that is going to be um, part of the, the dining room. Um, so you can see on the bottom there is the kind of half height wall that we're building. Uh, that picture on the right is the 3D rendering of what that's going to actually look like once we're done. So you can kind of see that it's starting to take shape, starting to look kind of like what, what it's going to be looking like uh, soon once we're, once we're done. Um, and like I said, it, pr it probably hasn't been super exciting to see what's been going on in there because it's been a lot of the upfront work that we've had to do, the demolition and the uh, wall framing and things like that. But in the next couple of weeks, I think we're going to be to a point where we're going to start drywall installation in the commons area, and that will really kind of make things take shape and really start to make it look like what it will look like when we're, when we're complete. All right, so now into um, the Bradford Terrace. So this is in the basement of Bradford Terrace, um, outside of where the uh, salon is in the basement of Bradford. Um, so we're renovating the, not only the salon area, but also the corridor um, area that's outside of that. So you can see that we've taken off the ceiling, we've taken off all the wallpaper, we've got new paint on the walls, um, we uh, have a new ceiling grid in place, and then we're working on getting new lighting that'll be going on, going in in the corridor as well. Um, just a huge difference. Uh, it's kind of the first area we've gotten paint done and uh, it's been great to see the transformation of that area down there to um, freshen it up and, and make it um, more up to uh, today's standards. 
All right, so into the courtyard area. So Tyler mentioned the, um, the ramp that we're building that you can see just outside the, the window here. Um, this is a picture from last week, but um, that's a picture of the, the footing. So uh, we put the concrete footings down first and that's what the foundation wall sits on and then the rest of the building sits on top of that. So last week we worked on getting that poured and um, in place. Um, you may have seen the rebar sticking out of the, the concrete with orange caps on top of it. So um, that rebar is there to help stabilize the, the foundation wall as we put it up. And the caps are there for safety reasons. So um, if somebody were to fall, that way they aren't uh, injured by that rebar that's sticking out of the ground. So that's a safety precaution. You'll get hurt by the ground. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully it pops off and instead of going through. So um, that's what that is. So next picture here is as of just like an hour ago. Um, so you can see here, the uh, we built the foundation wall, which is uh, concrete masonry units, block, um, concrete block. Um, so that's the foundation wall. So the next step is going to be um, us backfilling this with stone. So. Uh, filling the stone on the on the inside of the area and also on the outside to bring it back up to the same level as the ground that's out there. May I interrupt when you're on this picture? Yeah, sure. Um, I was looking out the window yesterday. I thought that the ramp was quite narrow, and then somebody just commented on hallways about that maybe they didn't think the wheelchair would fit down there. How wide is that ramp? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know the exact width, okay. but. Um, for sure, yes. Um, yeah, uh, the architect, when they design it, they have to design the 288 code, um, so it's the proper width. So it's it's definitely more than three feet. Um, I don't know what the exact dimension is. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. Um, so as Tyler mentioned, um, you can kind of see the outline of what this addition will be. Um, so when we're done, there's going to be a concrete or a floor here that will come out and then a ramp that will go up into the ground floor of the historic building. So there will be doors here, which are there currently. And then we have to cut a hole in the existing wall of the historic building to create that opening into the ground floor of the uh, historic building. So it'll be a very gradual um, ramp that goes up there. Again, meeting all ADA and code compliance with uh, um, slope on that ramp. Um, and if you do go up there after the meeting, if you look at the back side of this wall here, you'll see blue insulation that's up against the wall and you'll see a, 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 an angle on it. That That's what the angle of the, of the ramp was gonna be when we're done. Um, so that insulation is there to help with um, basically protecting the building from frost intruding into the what's going to be the interior of the building now so um, and like Tyler joked it's not going to be open to the elements <laughs> we are going to be uh, putting walls up uh, on the outside of this wall here that will enclose this area it'll have a roof on it and it will kind of match the look of um, the rest of the building that's that's um, it that's being connected to Yes, there are two or three windows, I think, in, in, in the uh, ramp area. So yeah, you'll be able to see out into the corridor. All right, and then into Bradford Terrace. So this is up on the second floor. Um, so we've begun drywall um, operations up on the second floor of Bradford, finally. Um, this picture is a little old because we have since then um, started the taping and, and finishing of those drywall walls. And then we've also started paint on those walls as well. So we're moving quickly, um, as quickly as we can um, in Bradford on the second floor and uh, trying to get ourselves out of second floor and then in the first floor and kind of work our way out of the building. So um, things are work going um, quickly now. We're moving forward well. And in a few pictures, we'll show you some of the finishes that um, we will be installing once we get to that point. Um, a couple more pictures here of some of the units that are on the second floor of Bradford. So um, this picture here is a view of one of the kitchenette areas that will be um, that will be part of one of the units in Bradford. 
And on the right here is a view of one of the kind of living dining room areas that um, will be um, part, of, part of one of the units in Bradford on the second floor. And then, yeah, this is a two bed assisted living part, apartment up on the second floor. All right, so like I mentioned, we've been furiously working our way through the second floor. We've also been taking in material um, ahead of when we have to install that, such as some of the cabinets that are going to be installed in the units. So we've been um, staging those cabinets up on the second floor lobby area. Um, and really excited to see that because that really kind of livens things up and makes it uh, seem like we're getting close to the end. So it's, it's great to see that stuff come in. Uh, means we're getting close to um, the finish line here. So it's great to see that and um, really looking forward to what it looks like when we're, uh, when we're complete. All right, so a fun fact. Um, you may have seen these trucks in the back if you have a view of the loading dock area, but um, this is one of the, the drywall um, trucks that comes to actually deliver the drywall to the job site. Um, when they come out and deliver, they're delivering about 400 sheets of drywall. Um, and they've, I don't know, they've made how many deliveries? Two in the last two, week. Two in the last week. Um, so that's, that's a good sign. It means we're putting up a lot of drywall and uh, putting up a lot of walls. Um, what's kind of interesting is all these drywall trucks have a, a crane on them that helps them unload the drywall. And um, because of how we've kind of um, approached the material handling of Bradford, we, we have the, we're utilizing these balconies on the back side of Bradford here. So they can take the drywall and put it right up, right up on the second floor so that way they don't have to use the elevator, they don't have to use the stairs, they can just take the drywall right in and put it where it needs to go. Um, so yeah, that crane can use, uh, lift almost 9,000 pounds. That's pretty cool. And then they use these outriggers to help stabilize the truck. So when they're lifting stuff up, the truck doesn't tip over. Oh, Carl's got something. Yeah, and so some of you, I know that some folks normally go for strolls out in the back of our, um, in our loading dock area, which we want to get you back there as possible, but we've got a lot of deliveries coming. And it's not you that I'm worried about, it's the, the guys, because they're used to seeing us in our high vis and our hard hats and stuff like that. So um, I, just out of safety, I can't stress enough. I know that the, the compost is back there, but um, if you can keep that for maybe later in the afternoons, you know, keep your compost delivery for later in the afternoons and just try to keep clear that area. I have been trying to catch folks I'm just so scared that something's gonna happen. We got our dumpsters back there, a lot of, and just a lot of deliveries coming in the next couple of weeks. So, and these guys are not used to, they're not used to having occupied shared facilities. And the last thing they're probably expecting is somebody going for a stroll back there. So if you guys could help us out with that for your safety and everyone else's, I so appreciate that. Thank you. And a lot of deliveries are good because it means that uh, all the stuff is coming in that we're going to be installing. So it's uh, great to see that happening. All right, so a quiz. Um, so standard sheet of, of uh, drywall is a four by eight sheet. Um, anybody have any guesses as to how much that actually weighs? 50 pounds. 50 pounds, okay. Anybody, any other guesses? 90. 90? Any others? 70, 75. 75? <clears throat> Let's see. I don't even think I know. Oh, 51.2 pounds. Nice. Oh, nice. Good guess. If I had a prize, I'd give it to you, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll bring something next time. Give her a sheet of plywood. Yeah, you can pick up a piece of drywall, sure, absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, they're really heavy, and um, again, that's, that's why they use the crane to get that all that material up there. Um, you'll see the guys walking around, they put those sheets on, on drywall carts to push them around, but at the end of the day, um, the, the men and women that we have on site, they, they have to pick those up and actually install them. So it's a lot of physical labor that it takes to make this all happen, and, um, and we're obviously thankful for all of them for doing all that to, to make it all happen. So, um, so that's our fun fact of the, of the month. All right, so that's 
that's all that I have right now. I'd, I'd open it up for any questions um, that anybody has. I'd be happy to answer those if there are any. Yes? What are they digging for in a courtyard? Just stone teeth out there. Gold? <laughs> yes, I know. They, uh, <laughs> You know, it was all nice and neat, you know, last week, and then those guys went in there and just tore it all up. So uh, that's a great question. Um, so what they are digging for is the underground utilities, is what we call them. So it's basically, they are hooking up to the, um, some of the downspouts that are out on the outside of the building and reattaching those to some new uh, storm structures that we're pl placing inside the courtyard area. So. Those are all there to ca capture any of the rainwater that, that um, comes down while it rains, basically. So they're redoing all the piping. Some of the piping that was there was fairly old. It was um, cast iron or clay pipe, which really isn't used a whole lot for that anymore. So um, it, it was it was definitely needed to replace that with, uh, we're replacing with PVC pipe. So that will be a lot longer lasting and much better product in there. What's the life expectancy of PVC pipe? Oh. Let me Google it real quick. Once. <laughs> I don't know. 50 years? So we're gonna do it yeah, let's take a guess. <laughs> it's Jim probably more than that. Uh, Jim, will you be here for that? Be here. I'll be here. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I don't know if I'll be here in 50 years, but Jordan. That's a good, good question. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. But 100, 100 years. 100 years. Oh, there you go. That's good enough. I guess yeah. Is that good enough, Jim? That's good enough. All right. That's a, conser that's a conservative estimate, so I don't know that somebody's actually like stuck around long enough to... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it could be longer. That's right. It's, it's not 100 years old already. DVC has Right, yeah. Old. You're, you're right. correct. Yep. So, yeah. so it could be wrong. It could be 150. Well, Great question, though. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Did you find anything interesting and unexpected? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you always find something when you're digging. You never know what you're going to find. Um, bones? No. Yes, we did. We did. We did find bones back there. We joked around that it was George Washington's cat. So it was um, I would say not really. I mean, we found some old conduits that were that were in there that were there was nothing in them. Um, we found some power um, lines and fiber, live fiber, uh, that we didn't know was back there. Um, but uh, you may have saw, I don't know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I think, maybe two or three weeks ago, we had a, what's called a Hydrovac truck oh, show up. Yeah, that was cool. And that's something that we use to, um, as a safety precaution for any, before we do any underground um, uh, digging at all. So they actually use a big vacuum and jet hose to basically make a hole in the ground so we can try to locate utilities so we know exactly where they are so we don't hit them because obviously hitting any fiber, that would be bad for data. Um, electrical, obviously would be very bad. So um, we do that to make sure we don't hit that stuff. And then we also use some other um, products like uh, ground penetrating radar actually as well to, again, verify where all that stuff is so we don't hit anything that we don't need to before we start digging. But, that's pretty much it. I think there were some bricks and stuff that we found recently, but nothing more than that, I don't think. Mm -hmm. What were the two big round concrete things in the hole? And the yeah, so that, those are the, the catch basins that I was mentioning before. So the rainwater goes in the, in the PVC pipes, those go to that big concrete structure, the water sits in there, and then it um, goes to another PVC pipe that runs it out to um, usually it's connected to the to the city stormwater at some point. And the holes that were in there, were those, are those kind of standard, or did you have them made special for you? Uh, so those are always different, yeah. So those are actually made custom um, a lot of times for what we use. Uh, all depends on how many pipes that we need to go in and out of that particular structure and what angles that they have to be at. So yeah, those are all made custom for this project. Any other questions? All right. all right, well thank you all for uh, being here and for listening to me and hopefully you have a good update and uh, 
as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. We'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, and again, as Jordan put there, thank you for your patience. Uh, again, as we've been throughout this project, we know that there's certain things that, that come in on and offline. I know uh, this week we asked a few of you to, to not use your bathrooms for a couple hours as they were tying in the main dining room. Um, so again, just our appreciation as we continue this journey in uh, getting getting our campus back to uh, you know the the renovated right renovated part. So, um, are there any questions for for Jordan or Carla? Otherwise, thank you uh, as always for another fantastic presentation. Thank you. Yes. Is there any. Does anybody have any questions for me? Are you having a designer come this month? Um, so we are currently, great question. So the designers are not planning to be on site this month. Um, we have worked diligently, I worked yesterday with the art committee. That's been the, really the big next piece. Um, it is the art committee and finding the walls and what kind of art wants to be in the common area. So we do not have the designers planned on site until they do the install of the first furniture in the main dining room. Any other questions? Yes. What is going on in the front of the historic building? So um, on the front side of the historic building, I think I mentioned it in the last week's memo as well as maybe this week's, but I might have missed it. Um, we have tuck pointing going on. So that is where these guys probably know better than I, but they are doing the work, um, basically doing the uh, preventative maintenance to the bricks of, of the building to make sure they stay in place. Um, Holton Brothers is our contractor. Um, Holton Brothers actually started, geez, almost two years ago now. It's a three year project um, that they're wrapping up now, tuck pointing the entire historic and contemporary building. Yes. Is anybody going to fix the uh, stained glass windows? What's wrong with them? Well, they put my finger in there, I think, one time. Mm. That, um, we'll, sure, we'll fix it. Um, <laughs> I, I'll have to see what that, what that means. It might just be um, something interiorly maintenance needs to take care of. So, okay. those are old stained glass windows. Those are original with the building. So, again, it's a, it's a special individual that gets that project in. That special individual, not named Tyler. Towards the bottom. Towards the bottom. So does it just look maybe a caulk line or something like that, or is it? There's a little where they put that metal in or whatever. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll have Eric take a look. Yes. Um, there's the damage that you repair the windows, but um, are they going to fix Jerry's porch because that's all broken away on the bottom before it falls down? Really yeah, I mean, the Holton Brothers will be out here for probably the next month and a half. I don't know their entire scope. I know we've done a number of different yeah, things yeah, on the really porch. Know, it's all so. all on, you know, you see right under the porch, it's not that pillar falls. You know. Yeah, we don't want a pillar falling, that's why we're doing the tuck pointing. So we'll take a look at that. This it's more than tuck pointing. Too. Yeah, I, I guess the Holton Brothers did the initial, I think, four years ago, there was a portion that was redone. They did that for us, too. So. Yes. Are they doing the interiors of the porches? That I have to check with Eric on. Um, I don't know if that's in their current scope. Um, we do know that there's some work that needs to be done there. So my assumption is that that will be done at some point, um, but we'll try to make sure those that have porches know when that work is being done. Any other questions? <coughs> well, if not, thank you everybody. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Um, and we'll see. Yes, Ms. Hunter. I'm going to say to you, you have nothing to Oh, that's a good question. I will talk to Jordan and I'll turn it back into your records. Yes, I can get you both of those. Okay? Right? Okay.